Being in love is a temporary madness. It erupts like volcanoes and then subsides. And when it subsides, you have to make a decision. You have to work out whether your root was so entwined together that it is inconceivable that you should ever part. Because this is what love is. Love is not breathlessness. It is not excitement. It is not the promulgation of promises of eternal passion. That is just being love, which any fox or jackal or fool can do. Love itself is what is left over when being in love has burned away. And this is both an art and a fortunate accident. Those that truly love have roots grow inwards towards each other underground. And when all the pretty blossoms have fallen from their branches, they find that they are one tree and not two. Who and Piglet. <laughs> and I've got three quotes. I wonder what Piglet is doing and I wish I was there doing it too. <laughs> Piglet noticed that even though he had a very small heart, it could hold rather a large amount of gratitude. And finally, Piglet sidled up to Pooh. He whispered, Yes, Piglet? Nothing, he said, just taking Pooh's paw. I just wanted to be sure you were there. I no longer believe in the idea of soulmates or love at first sight, but I was beginning to believe that at a very few times in your life, if you were lucky, you might meet someone who is exactly right for you. Not because he was perfect, or because you were, but because your combined flaws were arranged in a way that allowed two separate beings to hinge together. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up, and its faith, hope and patience never fail. Love is eternal. When I was a child, my speech, feelings and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I have grown up, I have no more use for childish ways. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will be complete. As complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. Church here in Overton. Today is a very special day. In the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we've come together to witness the marriage of Mike and Emily, to pray for God's blessing upon them, to share their joy, and to celebrate their love. Mike, 
Will you take Emily to be your wife? Will you love her and comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. Emily, will you take Mike to be your husband? Will you love him and comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. And will you, the families and friends of Emily and Mike, support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come? We will. <laughs> so we pray, God our Father, from the beginning you bless creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings on Emily and Mike, that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to each other. I, Michael John, take you, Emily. take you, Emily Leanne, to be my wife, to be my wife, to have <coughs> and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for I, Emily Leanne, take you, Michael John, take you, Michael John, to be my husband, to be my husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. <coughs> Emily, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. All that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mike, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I am. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. All that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Emily and Mike have given their consent. They have made their marriage vows. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife, those whom God has joined, let no one court to <coughs> Um, it's a real pleasure to see so many of you here today, particularly those who have come from far afield, indeed overseas, and the warm, to feel the warmth of your love and friendship for Mike and Emily. This does make the day that extra special. In preparing what to say today, I've reflected on Emily's life, remembering, well trying to at my age, the memories of those wonderful years seeing her develop into the person we see and know today. In hindsight, the qualities were always there, but the qualities that have enabled her to be successful, both as a mother, friend, colleague and person, were always there. I just wasn't appreciated by me at the time. Being the youngest, Emily, has always wanted to keep up with her older brothers, doing what they were doing, when they were doing it, not always appreciated by them at the time, neither by me and Andrew actually, because we had to make the peace. I'm sure, had it been possible, 
she would have run before she could walk. She skipped through school, not really bothering with the lessons, but enjoying the social life. Emily is an achiever, a hard worker, always with that positive attitude that will never let you down. Go with that extra mile, or three in her case, to get things done. She has achieved a great deal so far in her life and experienced more than her fair share of ups and downs. However, by far the most important and rewarding is young Josh. And together, they have developed into a strong, inseparable unit. So it's wonderful to see how Mike has enriched this. And importantly, Josh now has a stepdad who is almost as keen on sport as he is. <laughs> Emily, you have grown into a beautiful young woman that we see today. Amazingly capable mother, loyal friend to many, and loving daughter, who is kind, always cheerful, and generous. These qualities were always there and make you the wonderful person that you are. And you are, and look amazing. Enjoy. Emily, your mum and I are so proud of you. Not only as a bride and a mother, but a human being. We wish you, Josh, Lucy, Isabel, Sophie, the happiest of futures together. And with that, I'd like you all to raise a glass and toast the couple to the happiest of futures. But, um, wow, I am the luckiest man in the universe. True. Absolutely true. First of, on a winter's day, We've got a very unconventional first dance later, but just listen to the words. It's high tempo, it's fun, but listen to the words because they really mean everything. So lucky to have met Emily, and I'll say more about Emily in a moment, but she is just the most wonderful woman in the universe. Beautiful, inside and out. And I've got much more to say on Emily in a moment. But not just Emily, the whole family have been so welcoming, so patient, so warm, loving. The wider family, not just Angela, Pete and Gog, but Alan, Gray, all the children, Alison, Ling, the whole, and then I've met the cousins before, the Weiner family. It really has been amazing to meet such a wonderful set of people, and I really do feel part of the family. And then Joshy. Well, I've never had a son. I've got some wonderful nephews. But to have a, a you know, a stepson like Josh now, he, he's let me beat him on FIFA three times. <laughs> Even though he's 145. And he's now got a harder shot than me. He's got 50 goals this season, everybody. Yeah. For Overton. But no, because the thing is, Emily and Josh have had such a close bond for so many years. And for me to just to stroll in, start playing football, start playing FIFA, and all the other games you play, he's been so welcoming and happy. A happy face, so loving, and just great fun. We're like mates, best mates, but also you know, far more than that, now family, and it's just a really proud moment to be here saying that, Josh, you're amazing. I mean, I could be here all night to sum up the reasons why I love Emily. She's beautiful, obviously, looks incredible today, but also a beautiful person, so kind. I mean, the only problem we do have is we're both always saying sorry to each other because we both love giving and don't like receiving. Um, so I hope... Yeah, move on. Um, but yes, we, we are quite polite to each other sometimes, but we also have a really good laugh every day. We... <laughs> Has Nago gone yet? Has she gone? Has she corpsed? Normally at this point, Nago would be gone. Off, off camera, of course, the side. Um, but no, so kind. And you, do you know what? I mean, I work in sport, and I said, after the wedding, let's go away for the night. And Emily said, yeah, let's go away for the night. We're going to go away tomorrow night. And then Emily said, no, I don't want to go away. It's the Champions League final. Let's stay in the village and watch the football. Is this a dream? Is this fantasy? 
or is a reality? I'm first into song there. Maybe. I know it's not really tradition for the bride to do a speech, but Mike and I don't really follow the norm. <laughs> I've got far too many stories on Mike, but I should probably share a couple, right? <laughs> Where do I begin? Right. Um, I guess let's start with my pursuit to find my perfect um, man, right? Uh, this led to me generally kind of attracting the bad boys and pushing away the, the ones with potential. I absolutely exasperated the man at times. But I gave my stepdad a lot of laughs and we created spreadsheets with like point systems, kind of minus six for living 20 miles away, minus 10 for being married before or baggage. <laughs> um, you know, you kind of get the idea, but pretty naive of me really. But the one thing I said I would never compromise on is height. <laughs> yep. Here I am. Black shoes and all. But happier than I ever could have imagined I would think. <laughs> Just want to recognise a few people. First of all, my wonderful mum, who has absolutely been my rock throughout life. <laughs> you are the kindest and most selfless person I know. I have tested you <laughs> and frustrated you, but you've been there for me through the happy times and through the very, very dark. You're the most incredible granny to Josh, and we're so lucky to have you. Thank you for all you do, and you really do look amazing. To so this little boy next to me, Josh, my wonderful son. <laughs> you are the light and love of my life. This has been just the two of us for many, many years, and you've often had to be far more than a son to me. I know life isn't always easy for you, and you've had to deal with an awful lot of change, but you make me so very, very proud. We are so lucky that our little family of two now has a lot more love with Mike and the girls. And I love you so, so much. Izzy, Sophie, uh, Lucy, thank you for being such wonderful girls. I used to dream of having a little girl. But life doesn't always go to plan, right? <laughs> and I couldn't be more lucky to have three stepdaughters who are as beautiful and kind as you. Thank you so much for just embracing our future family. <laughs> Mike. Ah, my husband. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for just showing me what a, a normal relationship should be. <laughs> yeah, normal-ish. Ish. <laughs> that wasn't him again, so I didn't hear that very sorry. I'm not going to dig any deeper. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I love you with all my heart. And yeah, I just, I've never felt this content in my life. And thank you for being you. And I can't wait for our life together. <laughs> Hospital in 1965. Um, he was a tiny baby, uh, but he had beautiful blonde hair. And this is where I want you all to go, ah, and I'll pass it round the table. There he is. I've known him for almost all of his life. I wasn't actually there at the birth. <laughs> Margaret was, obviously. <laughs> and I think that made a difference because Mike has uh, inherited her sociability, her creativity, and her love of dressing up, <laughs> which I hate. And it's a joining together of two families, and so I'd like to give you the toast to the bride and the groom and their happiness together in the future. Thank you very much. This is a gift from all of Mike's friends at King Alfred's in Winchester. It's a tandem. Shall we 
we sing Daisy Daisy? Yeah. Daisy Daisy, give me your answer do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage, we can't afford a carriage. But you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle made for two.